Recruiting is a talent that very few people have. You don't know what an A player looks like till you get one. I'll give you $500 million, but you only got 30 days left. I doubt you'd take the money. Have a dream so big that everybody else's dream could fit inside. You could have anything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. Success leaves clues. Hey, Tommy, welcome to the show. Hey, pleasure to be here, Steve. I'm excited. <laughs> I've got to admit, you're one of the only guys that scares me with your energy, but uh, I, I love that. So we we met through a mutual friend, Joe Polish, and someone said to me about, oh, yeah, Tommy, you know, he's really cool. He's doing really well. He's a home service expert, and I didn't know what that meant. And then a little bit further on, I found out that you had you had this garage door company, and I'm like, well, great, you know, get but you were in the room with Joe and a lot of very, very successful people. And then I started hearing that it's a $200 million business. Now, I've worked with people that have made a lot of money out of things. You never thought it was a lot of money. How did you first get into the garage industry? Let's ch chance on that before you disrupted it. Yeah, so it was actually by fortune. I mean, I'm from Michigan. My mom worked three jobs after my mom and dad got a divorce when I was seven. And being from Michigan, Sterling Heights, mom didn't have much money working three jobs. You learn how to shovel snow and mow lawns. So I was doing home mm -hmm. service a long time ago. And uh, fast forward, 2005, my roommate was managing a garage store company in a lot of different markets. And he's like, listen, Tommy, I need a painter in Phoenix and I was bartending. I was serving tables. I mean, I was flipping cars. I had a small landscape company. I was just the hustler of hustler. And I was like, how much are you paying? He's like, I can get you a hundred bucks a door. You got to pay for the paint, the tape, the gas to get there. So I hired an old man. He taught me how to paint three doors. I gave him double what I got paid just to learn. And I went to Home Depot, bought a Magnum 5. It's a sprayer. And I found Speed Coat. It's a Glidden product. It was 12 bucks a gallon. And I, I, I would literally, I, I got to the point where I could paint 10 doors on Saturday, 10 doors on Sunday. I, I mean, mind you, I'm 22 years old. I'm making $1,600 profit on the weekends. Then I'm going to bartend making three, four, five hundred dollars $500. And, uh, you know, my other roommate was like, listen, I think I'm going to go work for him as a technician. So he started working for him. He turned out to be the best sales guy in Phoenix. And he came up to me and he goes, you know how to form an LLC. You understand how to do an EIN number. So I said, let's do it, dude. I, I did a couple of ride alongs and I said, I love this business because I'm allergic to grass and I had a landscape company. <laughs> and I thought I had it all figured out. We were going to do Yellow Book and Valpac. And uh, three years went by. We got into a lot of debt. I said, you know, the guy smoked more weed than anybody you've ever met in the planet. So I said, dude, I don't feel like this is 50-50. I feel like it's 80-20. I'm the 80 so I'll let you take on the debt and keep the business or vice versa. Very difficult conversation. He gave me the business, took on the debt, convinced my mom and stepdad to move out to Phoenix. They were trustworthy. They were the only people I trusted at the time because everybody was screwing us left and right. Uh, made every single mistake, Steve. Every mistake possible. I mean, lied to, cheated on. Cops were at my office. Theft. Vehicles being flipped like drugs at the customer's house, pooping at the house, on the lawn, like you name it, it happened. Uh, 2017, met the best mentor of my life. His name's Al Levy. He taught me about standard operating procedures, checklist, an org chart, communication, delegation, consistency. I was a firefighter doing 17 million back then. And he said, dude, we're going to get you organized and you're going to be, you're going to be a force to be reckoned with, but you're going to get bored. So you're going to continue to grow. So I have to redevelop systems over time. Uh, this year we should do 280 million, but that's not the, the the pride I have. I used to put up my chest and talk about revenue, and I learned revenues for vanity, profits for sanity. We're going to do 25 percent of the bottom line, and we're here watching people's dreams come true: home ownership, putting their kids into great schools, going on dream vacations, going to Disney World first class, and skipping all the lines, like. We could have a great business that's super profitable where dreams do come true. And that's something truly to be proud about. I noticed one of the things that, that warmed me to you, and we've had many conversations in getting to know each other, was that there are successful businesses and then there are people that go, well, okay, I almost have an obligation to impact people and to help them either 
get into the right space, correct the mess, um, mistakes they're making, and you you put out an immense amount of content which doesn't help you, but is pushing it out there. Why is it so important for you to get other people, in, in essence, challenging you within your industry to be better than you? Yeah, well, that's that's a tough question for everybody that works with me. Is they're like, dude, why are you letting everybody know our secrets? And yeah, you don't hold back. No, I, I let it all go, and and I don't really have a whole lot of secrets because what I realized was when I was charging the right prices, I became the villain. Uh, everybody would talk. Literally, it was like we'd get attacked on Yelp, on Google, on Facebook, and uh, all over. And until I started to explain to people, not we, we give options. I could be the most economical. I could beat anybody's price, or we could give a better product with a better warranty that'll last a lot longer. And so I just learned Zig Ziglar once said it. You could have anything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. And I didn't know what that meant the first time I read it. Now, when I help people and they're, they win, it's like it comes back full circle, but tenfold. I, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I had to witness it to know what it was like. But when you don't keep secrets and you share, and it's like it's like I'm just getting started. I'm in the fetal stages. Like people come to help me that I never asked for help because they've gotten something from me that I didn't even know they got. And maybe I say, you know, people, I didn't do anything. They took the knowledge and they implemented it and it saved their marriage. They became better parents. They became better leaders. They gave back to their people. And, uh, you know, it's addicting. Once you start helping people and really making a difference, it's not just the leader that changes. Everybody that looks up to them changes. Their family changes. Their generational wealth changes. Their family starts thinking optimistically. They help the community. Like, it's a crazy domino effect. It's a chain reaction that once you really learn what it does, it's like it's a bigger purpose, and it keeps my foot on the gas. Like, I don't slow down. I'm more focused than I've ever been. I'm more clear than I've ever been. And... You know, this whole idea of have a dream so big that everybody else's dream could fit inside. You know, I, I see a clear path to get to a $15 billion valuation, but how many lives could we affect in that process? You know, we give equity all the way down to the technician level. And so we're building generational wealth for hundreds and hundreds of people. And we're just getting started. One of the things I want to get into the tactics, but I want to ask a quick question. I, I admire the hustle. The hustle is one of those vital things that every entrepreneur needs. But when you entered into this garage door company, and as you've openly said, you took over the company with debt, did you did you have the vision, vision for the 15 billion valuation? Did you ever think, I'm going to be turning over 200 mil, I'm going to be the legend in my space, I'm going to be the, the Elvis of the garage door home service industry. Did you think that far ahead or was it surprised you along the way? I mean, when I was the bartending... I was by far the highest ringer at every bar I worked. There was nobody even close to me. When I was in sales, no one could touch. I flipped over a thousand vehicles. Like I knew I'm going to win. Uh, this says A1 from day one, aspire to be number one, one of our core values. I wasn't taught to lose. My dad never gave me our participation trophy. He made me do a hundred pushups with him every day. I was not allowed. We never celebrated losing. So I knew it was going to be big. I didn't understand the math to get to these numbers. I just knew... We were going to be a trendsetter. Now, I'm obsessed with math. I, but the most open application on my cell phone is my calculator. I mean, in the shower, I'm like the rain man. But, you know, I didn't know it was going to be this big. And, I, you know, I got to say, I've had a lot of great mentors. Like, for some reason, if you're humble and you smile and you ask for help and you don't gloat, the mentors that I have decided, hey, kid, we'll give you everything. You are humble and you want to learn. You're not going to be a competitor of ours in the HVAC plumbing space. You're more than welcome to come here. I'd buy him lunch, buy him dinner, and just smile and take notes and listen. That's one thing that they didn't understand was I was actually implementing because very few people that asked them questions would go do it. So they respected me even more. And they decided, I'm going to help this guy out. He's, he's, he's actually doing stuff. We feel honored that to pay it forward. And the reason I went to HVAC plumbing, it's a $180 billion market cap. And I said, Tommy, who has the most private jets in the home service space? HVAC. Those guys have figured it out. They started working together in the early 90s. They, I went to every $100 million shop in the country. And I'd walk in with a blank notebook, walk out with a loaded notebook, and then I'd go to town. 
I'd literally call him up and I'd say, I'm doing this, 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 this. And I'd make a lot of mistakes. That's the one thing I, I fell down a lot along the way. But I'd get right back up and I'd say, you can't really take a whole lot away from a guy that never started with anything. You know, you could take away all the money, you take away everything that I've got, but you can't take away of who I had to become to get to this point. And I'm a different person than I was. I've had to slow down and focus and the hustler had to die in a lot of ways. I had to become a better leader, a better delegator. I had to actually give back and put people before me. And uh, I'm excited. You know, the future looks great. The, the event that we're doing, and I, I want to get into that, September 25th in San Diego, the Freedom Event. If people only understood that I don't make money on these things, like I make money doing garage doors. People are like, why the hell do you do things that don't make money? Well, listen, if one person, I, I had a guy come up to me a few years ago. He said, hey, dude, you took an hour to talk to me. I'm going to give you one little clue in garage doors. You're not on the Chamberlain homepage for the zip zip uh, code locator. He goes, I'd call them. You're buying way more than me. I called them. They put me on there at 35 extra leads per day back then. Like some reason, it's like this stuff just happens. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm manifesting these things. This event is not a revenue generator. It's not like, I don't know a lot of people that do events that get rich. I'm not putting them into this two-day sales course. It's literally, the more I could change lives, the more we could impact people, the better I'm off, the better off I'm going to be. Like, I know that for, for certain. And a lot of people, they just, they've confided in me. I, I shake their hand and I mean it. And they come back and help me for some reason. They'll, they'll, they'll hear something, they'll find something, and they'll tell me, and it'll help my main revenue source, which is garage doors. I'm interrupting this podcast for 35 seconds to give you more value. If you are an ambitious entrepreneur looking for the opportunity in everything you come across, don't just listen to this podcast. Imagine taking part in these conversations every week. Imagine having a new network of creative and disruptive entrepreneurs to support and push you into becoming the person you can be. With this high level and exclusive community, it exists. Head to simsdistillery.com to learn more. So let's talk about the event for a second. Freedom 24, you've got uh, Jocko Wilneck there. You're obviously keynoting. I'm keynoting at the event. You've got some other rock stars there. It's a big event, and anyone that does throw events, and I've thrown many events from the Grammys, Hollywood, to, to my own events, I, I can look at an event and go, well, there's not a lot of money being made. You're throwing a massive event that you are right is not a profit source for you. Um, where is it? When is it? And how can people find out about it? Yeah, so it's September 25th. It's in the beautiful San Diego, the best time to visit. Uh, it's going to be... It's the freedom event, freedomevent.com. And, you know, my podcast right now is number one in business management. It's number 10 in business in the North America on Apple. And I say that because it's called the home service expert. But the reason we get 220 to 240,000 downloads is it applies to every business. It applies to life. It applies to bettering your best every day. If it was only about you know, landscaping and pest control and swimming pools and garage doors, it wouldn't get that many listeners. This event is not only for business owners and people in the trades, which I think the blue collar trades were winning now. Uh, it's for anybody that owns a business. If you're ready to just, the one thing I don't do, Steve, is I don't disappoint. I will not have somebody come there that doesn't feel like they've gained a lot of value. I, I just, I'm not having this event to do foo-foo and just do a bunch of motivational mindset. And it's also not 100% tactical. It's everything. And you should walk away knowing there's going to be changes made. There's going to be a little bit of discipline added into your life. There's going to be a great connection, a great networking experience that I'm praying will change your life forever. And it truly is about freedom. And freedom is not only about money. It's about health. It's about spending time with family. It's about doing the dreams you've probably not dreamt about in a long time and waking up and having an action plan and writing down your goals. And we say write down your goals, but... Write down SMART goals that are specific, meaningful, action-oriented, realistic, and on a timely basis. And I, I promise, <laughs> if this doesn't change your life, you know, and you find me at the event and say, this is not what I thought it was going to be, I'll give you your money back on the spot. I promise. Yeah, like, you, can. you can't have better than that. For, well, from my back, you know my background. My background is from uh, construction. My dad was a bricklayer, and I have a great deal yeah. of respect for anyone that's in the skilled trades. Um what are you seeing 
as the common mistakes people are making in the home industries today? Well, a lot of them, they're a great worker. And they decide, I'm a, such a great worker. Why am I making this guy or gal so much money? I should go into business for myself. But they know nothing about leadership, payroll, taxes. They don't understand the legalities of starting a business. So the first five years is really a crash course in business and it's sweat equity. And most people are underfunded. They, they don't care about their brand. One of the big things I talk about is spending a lot of money to get the right brand, the right website, the, you know, the right logo, like come up with the right name that's trademarked that you could grow. Uh, some people call themselves like P&L mechanical. That means nothing to anybody. And it doesn't really, th there's a lot of problems I see, but the biggest one is like, people don't understand the math. They don't understand a balance sheet and income statement. They really don't understand how marketing works. There's four KPIs that can walk into any country, any business on the planet and fix and make very healthy. I got to understand your booking rate your conversion rate, which means I'm door, I'm face to face with you. I can do this on e-commerce too. So booking rate when you call in or fill out a, a form, your conversion rate, your average ticket or opportunity job average, and your cost per lead. Then I got a formula I run and I'll show you how to exponent exponentially grow your business. And it's not complicated. Everybody wants to overcomplicate it. They're like, how do I hire good people? That's another big problem. You don't know what an A player looks like till you get one. And they recruit for you. They get five-star reviews. They'll pick up a shift on the weekend. They're, they're not complainers. They sit in the front row. They change the mindset of the entire company. The culture starts to grow itself based on these leaders. And when you don't have them, you know, Steve, there's a lot of people I meet that, that they want great people, but they're not great. I want you to write down 30 things about yourself of why I'd want to work for you and why you would attract an A-plus player. A players don't sit on the unemployment line. They're not on Craigslist, Indeed, Glassdoor, or ZipRecruiter. You know where they're at? They're working for somebody else, waiting for an opportunity for you to reach out to them. It's called recruiting, not hiring. The best of the best, they're already working somewhere. It's your job to go get them. People are like, no one wants to work these days. Yeah, for you, why would I? You can't even figure out why anybody would work for you because you took a chance and have a business that's not profitable. No one, you don't give any PTO, you don't give any type of insurance or dental, like no one would work for you. And you wonder, uh, you know, you pay your people enough to stay in the projects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it's a lot of people. The downside is, and again, I've got this from my family. Um, the, I don't want to say the trouble, the downside, the, um, the hold back, but usually people that are working hard with their hands tend to think, that's not for me. You know, I'm doing this because, hey, this is what I was built, built for. I know, I know my dad, as a, as a bricklayer, was very down on himself. He never had a lot of confidence. And there's a, a real mentality that you need to adapt that it's not a job, it's a career. Uh, it, there is a future to it, not just a paycheck. How do you handle getting people to change that mindset? So I just did orientation for three and a half hours to 40 brand new guys. There was one gal technicians and installers right across in the training center. And I said, first, we need to get you to believe in yourself. Some of you guys, you're not happy with your smile. Some of you, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're just not impressed. You don't even want to look at yourself. I said, you can't really help anybody else. So you're proud of who you are. And the best thing you could do, man, God gave us these beautiful smiles and when you smile, you could light up the world. And if you're not happy with it, it's our obligation to get you happy, to be happy with you first. And when I go to the doctor, if the doctor said, um, like, uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, you, well, and didn't make eye contact, I'd be like, dude, I'm out of here. When we go into the garage, we're the doctor. We say, listen, we're here to make your door safe. Did you know the garage door, an insulated door can make your garage door 30%. 30, 30 degrees cooler. It pays 192% ROI. You make money just like when you had a pool. Did you know the garage door is the smile of your home, 40% of your curb appeal? I'm here to give you options and you choose what's going to work for you. And you don't say that with a lot of alms, likes, you knows. And so I look for people. I automatically hire people that aren't great at sales. They just believe in themselves. They give a good handshake. They tell a great story. They're smiling. There's someone you want to go have a beer with. And I, I try not to be, I'm going to try to find people that I could save. I don't have time for that. Starbucks could handle that. I'm not doing it. I want to find somebody with confidence that likes to win, that's a competitive SOB, that's saying, hey, dude, you put me in, coach. I'm going to show you that I'm going to win. And 
hiring and recruiting is a talent uh, that very few people have. I met Nick Saban and I said, what's more important mindset or, or the uh, ability, like the natural talent. And he said, dude, I'll be honest with you both. He goes, I'm a, one of the best coaches that ever lived, but I'm a better recruiter. You know, you can only do so much nature versus nurture, right? You can only do so much with certain people. I mean, look at the look at the movie Rudy. I mean, he, he had the mindset, but he didn't have the body to play football. So I think it does take both. And when you become a great recruiter and you, you recognize talent, there's a great book called Who Not How. And when you get the right people on the bus, it's like everything changes and life becomes easier. And I, it is Tuesday, Steve, and I love it. I love Mondays. I, I, I built a place that I could come into and not feel like I'm working. And that's what I hope for everybody. And it's true. It's taken a lot of sacrifice. It's taken a lot of time, energy, and focus. And it didn't go right all the time. There are days I slept in my truck. There are days that I missed payroll. There are days that, you know, it got bad. I had to close four markets down in one day. But it was all, a ch- you know, it made me stronger. You know, it's like all these metaphoric little bruises and scars. I won't make the same mistake twice. That's one thing you got to know about me is like, dude, I've been through the ringer. And luckily, I made most of these mistakes in my 20s and early 30s. And I'm 41 now. I feel like, dude, I feel like I'm 25. Like, I I don't have kids yet. Uh, You met Bree. She's an amazing gal. Uh, The marriage is in our future. I definitely want kids. But I'm like, dude, I got so much to live for. Each day is a happy token for me. Each day. And I'm ready to share everything. And the more people want to know, like, I'm an open book. You're, you're more than welcome to come visit. I don't charge for this stuff. I, I just want to help people. I know it'll come back. You, the couple of things that you've repeated as you've gone through your conversation has been like, the, you know, you don't hire the salespeople. You hire the people that believe in themselves, the smile, the handshake, the confidence. Now, we're in a planet today where our confidence is being attacked just by some nutter on the other side of a screen in some state or even country making a rude comment about you on, on an Instagram profile. You know, you could be wearing a new shirt that you're proud of and you'll get some cretin go on there and go, you look fat. And all of a sudden it's wrecked your day. They don't know. They've got no consequences. So how do you help people with that reframe and that confidence? Well, social media is not really a great thing to get a confidence boost from. You get it from real life experience. You look at your inner circle. You know, if you don't get inspired by the closest five people in your life, then you live in a cage. And, right. you know, I have a lot of haters. I think everybody has haters, but uh, I've never seen a hater doing better than me. They live in their mom's <laughs> basement. They're jealousy and envy. It's great because more haters make me only stronger. It's weird how that works for me. I'm like, you know, people don't believe that the numbers we put out, they think like most, most influencers, if you will, they're, they're not real numbers. They're exaggerated. They, they live at their mom's house. They rent their car. Like I want people to come see, like, this is real. We're changing lives. And I put all this content out there, man. Look, a one is my baby, but a one's also my biggest asset that I'll continue to feed. And I, I know no matter what I do, You'd be surprised. I had about 10 technicians over last week and they looked me in the eyes and they said, dude, if you started a car wash and you made us wash cars, we'd go with you. We'll go with you to the pits of hell. We're, we're, we're going with you wherever you go. We're in because they know I show up and you know, the haters out there, they never met me. I just, I want them to meet me and and it's easy to talk, but you'll see that I can walk the walk. I'm here. I come here every day. And I enjoy what I do and I show up. I was the last one to buy a new vehicle till every single technician and installer had a brand new vehicle. I was the last one. I lived at the training apartments for four years. I got to meet the guys every day and talk with them about their day. I'm committed. And, uh, and you know, I will say this. I'm enjoying every minute of it. It might not, even though there was trials and tribulations, man, I enjoyed every minute. Everything that's happened to me happened for a good reason. And, uh, it's, it's like uh, when you watch people winning and you had a part of it, Steve, and you've done a lot of this for a lot of people. And maybe I'm selfish that I like to, to watch people win that I was part of. I don't know what it is. I never really like re- re- reflected and tried to figure out exactly. But when I see people winning, it just makes me 
smile and think, man, I had a, a hand in that. Like I did good. And when, when, when my funeral happens, when they're ready to bury me, I hope it's out in the open somewhere in the middle of a beautiful field and no one's wearing black and they could say one thing, whatever that guy said, he meant he came through and he had more, he improved our lives more than he took from it. And he always committed everything he said he was going to do. He did. We were better off knowing him. And if I could do that, that's the legacy I want to leave. I've noticed you are, um, you're a sponge. Uh, you want to get as much information in you as possible. You want to ask questions. I remember being in Vegas uh, with my wife, and I can't even remember why I was in there. And I remember getting a phone call from you, and you were saying about, oh, you know, I'm doing this speech. And you you, you started talking to me, and you were asking questions. You've, you've always focused on, and you, you laid claim to it just a few seconds ago, that if you're not around people that push, provoke, invigorate, you know, inspire you, then, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. You're constantly making sure that you're reaching out to get that mentorship to get you to the next step. How important is it for you to always find that room that challenges you? It's the most important thing. My favorite three letters are ASK. You know, but you got to ask the right people. And this is the biggest kind of, this is the craziest thing I could tell you is I don't got to go to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok for the people I want to learn from. The people I want to learn from, if I want to learn, I, I'm not a father yet, but when I am, I'm going to watch kids and I'm going to go to the best, like the kid that's smiling the most that's playing outside and I'm going to meet the dad and become friends with them. If, if I want to go to the top of Google, I just search grot or uh, roof repair Phoenix and find the number one guy on Google. If I want to find Yelp or Pinterest or house or any of these places, success leaves clues. Like I feel like people are going to the wrong people because nine out of 10 people are fake. They don't have the right advice. So why not go success leaves clues, find the people you want I just don't be afraid to ask. And I don't have one or two mentors. I invest millions and millions of dollars into myself a year. I I don't, I have 1,423 books on Audible. I haven't read every single one, but I've read the majority of them. I've got more books on my shelves now than I've read. A go for stupid and uh, blue fishing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just trying to be the best version of myself today. I'm the best I've ever been, but the worst I'll ever be. Because tomorrow I'm going to be a little bit better. And, um, you know, I'm a trendsetter. I don't really care what people like about me uh, because I know there's not a lot of people. There's there's this jealousy and envy and things that people don't know. And it's easy to criticize me. But if they knew my heart, they probably changed their uh, tune pretty quickly. One of the things you said earlier and one of the things that I've discovered as I was growing up was that successful people actually want to help you. And there's a lot of fear by going, oh, they're very successful. Why would they want to talk to me? Oh, my God, if I ask them a question, they're going to get security on me. But I always found that it was the person that was pretending that gave me the attitude and didn't want to help. Because nine times out of ten, they didn't have the answers that could help me. They just had the, the pretty Instagram. You've made a point of going to the most successful people. And every time you've gone to them, I want to ask you quite bluntly, has anyone ever shut the door in your face and not answered your question? There's been a few guys that I, I went to after they got off stage. And uh, one of the guys that won't go into who it was, he said, you, you kid, you couldn't afford me. And uh, I looked at him and I just thought, okay. I remember this day vividly. And, uh, he was talking I hope about it wasn't Ferrari. recently. Oh, no, 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 no. This was a long time ago. Uh, you know, part of having a personal brand, Steve, and this is something I recommend for everybody, is write a book, start a podcast, like, like get to know people and start to just ask great questions and record it. Uh, because my personal brand has opened a lot of doors. People take my phone calls now. Obviously, A1 built my personal brand, and I'm using my personal brand to help grow A1. It's weird how that works, that I actually have a business that my personal brand could help. I had about 10 out of the 40 people next door say they're here because of Tommy Mello. They didn't, they didn't apply for a job. They wanted to work here because they know I'm one of the leaders in the company. And that means a lot to me, and I'm hoping that I'm doubling down. I mean, we just hired one of Mr. Beast's top people. We're building a team of 15 
more between social media, more videographers, editors. And the goal is that when I put something out there, we get a line of A-plus players. Uh, 1A equals 3B. I mean, 1A player will run circles around 3B players. And I, I will say this, Steve. Um, I don't know how to say this and stay humble, but God's been really good to me. Money's been kind of my my prayers were answered. Um, and when you reach this pinnacle of success with money, you kind of wake up and you're like, what's next? And not to say money's not important because I want to continue to affect lives and money's a tool, but, um, but it's definitely not happiness. It's not like you wake up one day and there's a hundred million and all like, there's a lot of responsibility that most people don't even want with money. And they're probably, you know, I see people commit suicide, get on drugs, become raging alcoholics. Once they make money, they're literally, their lives aren't better. It's worse. Um, mm. and with great power comes great responsibility. So I just recommend it for anybody that's just money's the sole goal. I don't, I'll give you a $500 million, but you only got 30 days left. I doubt you'd take the money. And that's why I'm so dedicated to health now is I think that's the next chapter and seeing how many people I could help inspire to become the best version of themselves. And I, I don't, I don't understand exactly. I have not dwelt enough on why, what makes me tick. I don't want to take apart this brain. I don't know if I like what I find, <laughs> but I know it, it's helping out a lot of people and uh, I'm enjoying it. I, you know, Gina Wickman, right? EOS. Yeah. Yeah. G Gina wrote a book recently called shine. And he said, dude, you work your whole life to create something big. You get the money and the treasure and you still don't feel complete. It's crazy. And I've been there and uh, you know, there's, there, there's so much more. And right now I'm living in the present. I just got baptized a month ago. Uh, I'm not making this about Jesus. So that, yeah. He's my Lord and savior. You know, Jesus Christ is in my life. Bree's great. My family's healthy. I'm spending 4th of July in Milwaukee with my niece and nephews. You know, there's a lot of people, Steve, that'll come on a podcast or, or go on an interview and they'll tell you how great it is. But behind closed doors, I am really, really thankful. Like things are going really well. I don't have anything, nothing to complain about. Like I am so fortunate. I am a, a proud American. I'm very, very proud to be in this country and God's given me so much. It's a huge responsibility that I'm ready to take on. That's yeah, beautiful. <laughs> now, you talked about your content. I've spoken about your content. Where is it best for people to consume your content? So the Home Service Experts, the podcast, you can find it on any podcast source. I wrote two books, The Home Service Millionaire and Elevate, Build a Business Where Everybody Wins. Uh, if you go to Tommy Mello, there's no W in Mello, T-O-M-M-Y-M-E-L-L-O. Dot com. You can find all my social media. Um, official Tommy Mello is where most of my stuff is at. And uh, we do have a pretty cool newsletter. It's uh, TommyMello.com forward slash news. I sound like a robot spitting off all this stuff, but however you like to consume information, I'm probably there. Uh, I've been pretty serious this podcast. I'm usually really goofy. I'm a joke teller. <laughs> I'm just very passionate today, and I'm really excited to do this with you, Steve. You're you're one of the guys I look up to, and there's not a whole lot of them out there. Uh, you don't know how much that makes me feel. I appreciate you, man. I'm looking forward to freedom. I love your attitude. I love your impact. Um, a lot of people I've noticed in life that the money matters a lot to people that don't have it. People that have it focus on impact and how they can get other people to get what they want. And in the early stages, that's money. And then that turns into impact. Freedom, I'm looking forward to. Who's the lineup for Freedom this year? So I got Darius Livers. This guy is the goat of home service. Like he puts on clinics. Like there's no one better that I know of. And he's kind of a hidden gem. Uh, Jocko just talks a lot about discipline and extreme ownership. Alan Rohr knows everything there is to know about financials and makes it keep it simple. Simon, right? You've got different players. Uh, you're going to be there. And I just, one of the things I tell about you, Steve is just, you got the ability to just ask and open doors that no one really understands how to open. And you just ask, you understand how to ask better than anybody I've met. And that's my claim to fame is I'm always the dumbest guy in the room asking and what you've done just by being a guy in Hong Kong doing security 
and getting access. Uh, I think people need to hear that. And um, we've got we've got several other people. We've got a, a young guy named Nick who's 20 years old, started a mobile detailing business. He details my vehicles, absolutely murdering it, buying truck after truck after truck, 20 years old. We've got um, my good friend, Sebastian, he was at my house yesterday. He's got some AI software and AI and machine learning is thrown around. This is the real deal. And it's used in home service and it'll literally double any company that uses it. It's called Rilla Voice. And I'll talk about how artificial intelligence is changing the game for home service. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of other panels and different things going on. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit about becoming the best version of yourself because you know what hell on earth is? Imagine this, Steve. You know, you've got a kid, you've got a wife. Imagine being on an ocean, not on the ocean, but on the beach, and you're running, and you're just by yourself, and you see this guy, and this guy is just looks incredibly happy. His wife's on his shoulders. His kids are running. His dog's running behind him. And as you get closer, you start to see a resemblance of you. And you realize, wait a minute, that is me. That's the best version of who I could have been. I just didn't have the discipline. I didn't have consistency. I didn't have delayed gratification. I didn't have commitment. That would be hell on earth to know, to see the self you could have become. I think you took advantage of a lot of things in your life that most people would have said, you're, you're crazy. You're stupid. You're taking risks you shouldn't be taking. And look how it's worked out. And a lot of people, they've got that inner voice, but they start ignoring it and it goes away. And that's what this is about is, uh, we take chances. We're entrepreneurs. We're the 1%. We're the hunters. Not a lot of people know even what to do with people like us. Uh, and I just hope, I just hope we could have more impact. And I, you know, it's great. It's a great lineup and there's great panels and you're going to learn a lot more than just home service at this event. Well, I'm going to be there. Uh, we will put the link below. I'm looking forward to being able to change someone, and I'm looking forward to meeting the panel. Looking forward to hanging out with you as well in September. It's been too long we haven't hung out with each other. We're speaking on the phone, but we haven't kind of like face to face for a while. Tommy, thank you very much for being a on the show, but b for being you and for sharing. All the links are going to be in the show notes. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate you very much. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. You know what to do. If you love it, share, subscribe. But more than anything, do something with it. And remember, life's too short to play it safe. So disrupt, connect, and grow. See you next time.